Hey babies, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. Uh, today we'll be talking about Carl Jung's concept of the collective unconscious and then we'll be going on to explain the four major archetypes which are persona, the shadow, the anima or animus and then the self. There are 12 other archetypes but we'll be explaining that in some other video. So let's get into it. Carl Jung talks about this concept called the collective unconscious, which he believed could be expressed through these universal concepts known as the archetypes. These archetypes can be signs, symbols, patterns of our own thinking and behaving that have been inherited from our ancestors. Humans may not be able to understand what these thoughts and images are in their collective unconscious, but it is claimed that we can tap into that collective unconscious in moments of crisis, which to be honest, sucks. Because who the hell wants to be going through stress and to find that you can unlock the doors of your collective unconscious. But what can we do? It's life and life sucks, but not when I have you people, you sweetie pies. Jung believed that we are made up of three parts, which is the ego, the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. The Jungian archetypes can be found in our collective unconscious. So what is this collective unconscious? Well quite simply it's the part of the unconscious mind that comes from ancestral memory and experiences and this is common to all humankind according to Jung. Basically it's an inherited collection of all this knowledge and images that every human being has at birth. Now that we have cleared up what the collective unconscious is, I think we can move on to explaining what these archetypes exactly are. Now as we had said earlier, Jung believes that the human psyche was made up of three parts. So one part would be the ego and the ego reflects the conscious mind. There is then the personal unconscious which contains suppressed memories and then the collective unconscious that reflects shared memories with everybody else. This is where ancestral memory, memory uh, is. Uh, it's in the collective unconscious. This collective unconscious contains ancestral memory which is made up of images, symbols and themes that are inherited. The collective unconscious shapes our lives, it shapes our experiences, knowledge, our perceptions. Within these parts of our memory there are then four main archetypes that make up our personality. These arch types give light to our passions, our values, morals, belief systems, motives. Now we can start talking about the main archetypes and the four main archetypes are the persona, the shadow, the anima or the animus and the self and we'll be going over each one and we'll be explaining what it exactly is. So let's start off with the persona. The first archetype that I want to talk about is the persona. What is the persona? Well, the Jungian persona is pointing towards the mask we wear. You may notice that we can be different people in different situations. For example, at work, you might hold a very professional demeanor. You act very controlled. You try to project yourself as a very charming person who is incredibly mature and serious. But with your friends and family, you might be a goofball. You might be the joker. You might be the person that farts at the dinner table. The person that gives us an, oh yeah. The person, persona is the personality that an individual projects to others. When we are alone, we have nobody to impress. We search for no validation from others. We are different. However, in public, we want to portray an admirable image of ourselves. We want to be eye candy. We want to make people say, wow, look at this person. What an in in intelligent individual. Quite an eccentric lad, a very beautiful woman, blonde with brains. I have never seen such a person in my life. Marvellous. 
this persona suppresses our primitive urges, our impulses, emotions that are not considered socially acceptable. If we were to act upon our impulses, then for most of the time we'll be seen as fools, as vile human beings, disgusting people, we'll be judged and people will hold their fingers at us and if our primitive impulses tells us to bite those pointing fingers off, then it will just make matters worse, won't it? So we wear a mask to be accepted, to be validated, to fit right in. You must look like you are cozy. Yeah, sure, people could see through it all. There are people that see through it all, the masks, the character we play. I am sure most of you, if not all, listening to this right now, could also see through it all. There is a problem with the persona. And I want to talk about this problem. And that is that when somebody becomes very attached to their persona, to their characters, they might lose their sense of self. They become very immersed in the character. They forget who they are. When somebody gets caught in playing the character so much, they will not be able to be able to uh, differentiate between themselves and the world in which they live. Such people are very cautious of what people think and such people would even give themselves up for what others want because that person does not have the courage to endure the conflict. That person has a persona to carry and he's so immersed in playing that character that he will give himself up for others in order to carry that character. That is the persona. Now we can move on to the shadow. It is the dark side. The things that are made up of nightmares. Worse than anything you'll ever see on Elm's Street. It contains everything we choose to um, repress. They are things we do not like. Things we hate. Things we are not even aware of. They live rent-free in our unconscious state. Most, if not all of us, want to convince others that we are not so bad. We won't steal your lunch. We will not. Do not uh, accuse us because we will not steal your girlfriend. No, no, no. We will not blame our thoughts on other people. However, Young claims that we have these dark traits within us. We cannot be without them. Young calls this the shadow self. It is everything that we have denied within ourselves and things we do not want to be associated with. But we notice such things in other people. And what exactly could these be things uh, be that we deny within ourselves? Well, for example, it could be the fact that you're gay, you know, your sexuality, maybe your anger, maybe your jealousy, the fact that you're careless your love for money, your greed, and all these things we see as sins, as dark, as evil, bad, ugly, negative. Our shadow self embraces all that we deny. It cherishes, cherishes everything that we feel guilty and shameful for. And the shadow is emotional in nature because it has to be. Without being emotional, it cannot go against the ego. The shadow has its own being and that being is separate from the conscious mind. It is instinctive, irrational and the shadow wants to project itself. Everything that it finds evil, everything that it sees as inferior and everything that we fail to admit is also a part of ourselves. It attributes to everyone else. Moving on, let's now talk about the anima or the animus. Anima is male and the animus is female. Depends on what gender you are. So in every man, Young claims, there's a woman. And in every woman, there's a man. Young believes that this anima or animus is present within the shadow. They are the qualities of our opposite gender. Within me, there is a Karen who is ready to call for the manager. And within some woman, there could be the Giga Jad who does not care that you broke your elbow. 
Young thinks that we have the ideal image of a man or woman within us and that this ideal has been formed by the experience of our parents and by our culture, uh, culture and heritage too. The anima or the woman in the man's psyche, for example, that could be a sensitive, empathetic, loving, uh, when he's accepted uh, sort of person. He could have a caring nature. He could be self-loving, self-caring, self-soothing. And when he is rejected or dismissed, he could be moody, hysteric, dramatic and so on. The man possesses woman's characteristics, both positive and negative. The same applies to the woman. The woman could hold masculine tendencies too, such as, you know, uh, the stereotypes or confidence, assertiveness, courage, strength, desire to achieve and all these stereotypical male traits the anima or the animus has its own being uh, it has a, a mind of its own it's which is a uh, separate from the conscious mind and then the last arch type which is the self when we have the persona the shadow and the traits of the anima or animus archetypes molded into one character then we have gained access to the deepest parts of our mind and that is the archetype that makes us a whole and this archetype is called the self it is the most important of them all the self is where our impulses tells us to leap towards self-realization. The self is the place where we mature and become more stable as we grow older. It is responsible for the process of forming a more stable personality and this is known as the process of individuation. You take it all together, the whole ingredient, and you bake you yourself. So you get some persona, some shadow, a bit of the opposite gender and you mix it all up and voila, you get the self. And we let the self cool down a bit and with time the self becomes more aware of, uh, aware of itself and in return it becomes more stable. So those were the four major archetypes. I'll be going on in some future time to explain the 12 Jungian archetypes in detail. So do be sure to catch me then. Take care and I love you. Goodbye. Subscribe, comment and share. Have a nice time.